Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. So, in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys the best OBS recording settings in 2019. And if you want some proof as to why I'm a good person to go to for this kind of stuff, I actually have the most popular 2017 and 2018 versions of this video, so hopefully we can do it again for 2019. Also, for those of you guys watching this in early January, in the video I will have an unreleased version of OBS with a few new features and a brand new encoder that isn't out to the public yet. So like I said before, these are truly the best 2019 settings because no one else making this video on YouTube has this version of OBS that I'll be showing in the video. Anyways, if this video doesn't help you guys out at all and you want to see more videos like it, then please do hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. But other than that, let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so first things first is go ahead and open up OBS, and if for some reason you haven't already installed it yet, then I will have a download link in the description to whatever the newest public build is. I'll also be including a link to Streamlabs OBS, which is kind of like an all-in-one OBS that will have your live chat, stream alerts, and so much more. It's mainly meant for streamers, but I thought I'd leave that in the description as well. However, for this video, like I said before, we are going to be using the normal OBS, so once you do have it open, it's probably not going to look the exact same as mine because obviously I have my own like overlay and things like that, but I am going to be walking you guys through that stuff later on in the video. So there's a pretty good chance that your screen actually looks something like this, like just with the black screen, and if for some reason you don't see that, just right click and hit enable preview, and then you should be good to go. So if this is your first time using OBS, then I should quickly explain scenes and sources for you guys. So your scenes are different kinds of visuals that you want to show up in your video or on a stream. So you can have one for maybe like a normal desktop recording, you can have one for like your gameplay recording with the face cam like I do right here but all that is just really personal preference for whatever you yourself need in your video or your stream you can make a new scene by actually going down here hitting the plus button and then just name your scene whatever you want to name it so you can name it like desktop recording or desktop or like Fortnite or whatever you want to name it hit ok and then you should be good to go from there we can actually add our sources and your sources are basically what you want to actually have in your video for other people to see so if you want to show your computer screen all you have to do is go to the plus right here Click for display capture, and then from there just click on OK. If you have multiple monitors like I do here, then you will see multiple displays available for you to pick from, but we're just going to be recording the main display. From there, click OK, and you should see like a little Inception style thing on your screen. So just with those few simple steps, we were able to get whatever is on our monitor into our scene, which is literally exactly what we wanted. If you want to add a game capture, then you just do the same thing. Go to the plus, go to game capture, and then just pick the window that you want to select, and it's only going to capture that game's full screen window. And I have noticed that sometimes game capture might give you a black screen when the game is running, so if that's the case, try doing a window capture or a display capture instead. And if you do want to add your webcam like I had before, all you have to do is go to the plus right here, hit video capture device, from there it will let you pick your webcam and adjust some settings if you want to, but it's pretty straightforward. So like I said before, feel free to play around with all the different kind of sources that you can actually add until you have a scene that you genuinely like. I only made that scene just for the tutorial, but I'm going to switch back to my normal scene and then we can go back to the settings, which is basically what you guys have been waiting for. So the first tab that you're actually going to get to is going to be the general tab, and from here you can basically change your theme, there's really not a whole lot much you might want to do here. Um, I personally like to do mine at default, but I'm going to change it back to dark because I don't want to blind you guys. So feel free to do whatever you think is cooler, from there hit apply, and then we can move on to the output tab. And we actually did skip over the stream tab because I'm already working with NVIDIA on a streaming settings video for you guys, which is going to be coming to your sub boxes soon, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever I do upload. It might actually already be linked in the description of this video if you're watching it a while after it's been uploaded, but anyways, once you're here, just change the output mode from simple to advanced, and then go to the recording tab. From here, we're actually going to leave our type at standard, and for your recording path, this is actually where all of your recordings will get saved to when you're done recording. So for this, maybe make a new folder in your documents or like on your desktop. I'm just going to do new folder. I'm not going to really care too much about the name. From there, hit browse, and then just go ahead and look for that new folder. So I saved mine to my desktop, and it's titled new folder. Hit select folder, and that's basically it. The file path should update automatically. Now every video that you record on OBS will get automatically saved to this folder right here and I'm going to be showing you guys that later on in the video. For your recording format, there's a ton of options that you can pick from but I definitely think that MP4 is going to be the best one for most of you guys watching this video. If you know for a fact that you're going to have to use a different extension like FLV or MOV or something like that then by all means go for it but MP4 should be fine for most of you guys. Moving on from that, I usually leave my audio track at 1 and for most of you guys it's probably going to be the same as me. Now next up we've actually got the encoder, and this is the great thing about this new version of OBS. It's literally GeForce optimized which is great for people with NVIDIA cards. I genuinely can't explain to you guys how insane this new encoder is for recording or streaming without having to take major performance hits. Honestly, I'm not lying, NVIDIA really outdid themselves with this one. But anyways, you're only going to see these NVIDIA encoders if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you have an AMD one, then it might say AMD something, and if you have neither, then you're only going to be able to use the X264 encoder. Now the issue with that is that it will put a lot of pressure on your computer since you're going to be using your processor to actually encode your recordings. Now realistically speaking, if you don't have either the NVIDIA or AMD options here, then that usually means that you're going to be using onboard graphics, so there's a good chance that you might not even be able to record without major stuttering and issues in your final video. But anyways guys, we're going to be picking the new NVIDIA encoder, and then for rescale output, let's actually leave this unchecked and we're going to be talking about it in a second. 
Now, moving on from there, we actually have the rate control. And I'm sure you guys have seen a ton of people use CBR in the past, but I'm gonna keep it real with you guys for this part. BBR is way better than CBR when it comes to recording, but most people just don't know that yet. So anyways, we're gonna select that. And then for most computers, you can set your bitrate to 40,000. And for your max bitrate, just set that to 60,000. And I'm saying this because it's gonna be basically more than enough for really just anyone, but if you really want to push your quality to the max, then you can try 50,000 in the bitrate section, and then try 100,000 in the max bitrate section, but I don't really think that's incredibly necessary if the other one works fine for you. So definitely test both and see which works best without your computer lagging or anything like that. And then just go ahead and stick with that one. But I definitely recommend doing 40,000 to 60,000 because that is what works best for me and I definitely think it's gonna work fine for you guys as well. Now moving on from there, let's actually leave the keyframe interval at two and for preset, either do max quality or just normal quality. Personally, again, I would test both and see whatever works best for your computer. Most likely quality is gonna work better for like older computers and max quality should work really well for like the new run, like beefier computers, if that makes sense. So I personally know that I have a really good computer with like an RTX 2080, an i7-7700 and things like that. So I can use max quality, but more than likely a lot of you guys will be using quality. So I'm gonna select this and don't worry if your settings are different than mine, that's just normal. Anyways, next we do have your profile and this should always be on high no matter what. And then moving on from that, I personally like to keep look ahead and psycho visual tuning on. Now these are actually two new features that might not be out to the public yet, but should be coming out on OBS in like late January. So in case you're watching this video and don't see these settings or the new encoder, don't worry, you might see it like later on in this month. Anyways, this GPU section right here is only if you're running a dual GPU system, so you can select whichever card you want to use for encoding, but most of you guys will probably not be doing that. So you can select zero and then for the last part, we're going to select two for our max B frames. Also, if you guys do want to know more about B-frames or are just curious what some of these settings mean, then just go ahead and follow me on Twitter and DM me and I'm happy to help. Anyways, hit apply and then from there we can move on to the audio tab. So all this is pretty straightforward, but I'm going to run through it for you guys really quick. So basically leave the sample rate at 44.1 or 48, whatever is the default one for you guys. For channels, I prefer to leave mine at stereo and I definitely think you guys should as well. Desktop audio device is basically where the sound from your computer travels to so that you can hear it. So for me, it's going to be my Sennheiser headset because that's actually where I hear all the sound playing on my PC. And if you have a headset, then it's probably going to be that for you too, unless you use like speakers or something else. So I'm going to select that and you're most likely going to be leaving the second desktop audio device disabled unless you do have one. I really don't know, but most of you guys will probably only have this enabled and this enabled right here. And what this is, is just going to be your microphone. So I have the blue Yeti stereo microphone. You can click this and just select whatever one you want to, but I beg you guys don't leave it at default. Always just select the one that you definitely know is going to be the microphone that you want to be using. So I'm going to select that. And then for the rest, you can just copy my settings, hit apply, and then we can move on to the video tab. Also guys, I am recording this video at 5 a.m. So if you guys could hit that like button for me, then I'd greatly appreciate it. But anyways guys, once you're on the video tab, these numbers might look a bit different, but don't forcefully try to copy my numbers. It's okay if yours are different. So basically your base canvas resolution is actually gonna be your monitor's resolution. So for me, mine is 2560 by 1440 because I have a 1440p monitor. And that's why mine shows up with this resolution. Almost all of you guys will have 1920x1080 here. So just pick that from the drop down menu. It's more than likely gonna be the one that's all the way at the most top. That's usually what your monitor resolution is. For your output scale resolution, this is actually gonna let you downscale your files resolution. So in case you play in 1080p, but want to record your video in 720p, then that's what you would select here. So you just click this, Look for a 1280x720, and if you select that, then all of your videos will get downscaled to 720p, and when you upload them to YouTube, they will be in 720p. Now, I personally play in 1440p, like I said right here, so I like to downscale my videos down to 1080p because that's what I upload all my videos in on YouTube. And I'm gonna keep it real with you guys again, almost all of you guys will have 1920x1080 for your output scale resolution and your base canvas resolution, and that's totally okay. Anyways, moving on from that, keep your downscale filter at sharpen scaling 32 samples. It should be the last one in the drop down menu, and then from there, make sure this has common FPS values, and and then from there, either pick between 60 FPS or 30 FPS. I definitely recommend 60 over 30 because, because 30 FPS just doesn't look that good to the viewer at all. But if you do have an older computer, then that might just actually be your only option. But anyways, from there, just go ahead and hit apply. And then from there, we're going to move on to the advanced tab. So most people almost never talk about this, but OBS recordings look really washed out when you hit the stop recording button. So to fix that, go to the advanced tab. For your YUV color space, change it to 709 from the drop down menu. And then for your YUV color range, change it to full. From there, make sure the rest of your settings are basically the same. You don't have to worry about this stuff down here. Just make sure that like all this stuff is the same. Hit apply, hit okay, and you should be good to go. Also, one thing I do wanna show you guys right here is in case you're recording and you notice that your desktop audio is too loud, you can adjust that right here. And in case you notice that your like actual microphone is too loud, you can adjust that right here too. If you're wondering why my microphone is showing up with my webcam, I have it set up that way in my sources because you know you can go to here, add video capture device. You can actually add a microphone in there as well. 
So that's how I have mine set up personally, but obviously you guys are gonna set up your scenes the way you want to. But anyways, I'm gonna hit start recording and you guys should see the recording that I'm about to start up on your screen right now. All right guys, cool. So I just start up the recording. Uh, I guess we can mess around with this stuff for a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and just like play around with my screen. Hey guys, 100 Thieves, we got 100 Thieves right here too. All right guys, <laughs> that's enough for the test recording. So let me go ahead and stop that right now. All right guys, so the video recording that you guys just watched on your screen right now for a couple of seconds, it was pretty dumb, but anyways, it got saved to the new folder that we did create on our desktop earlier on in the video. So if I do double click this, it is gonna be the video that you guys just saw on the screen right now. If I right click it, go to the properties, and then from there, go to details. You can see that it was recorded in 60 FPS and in 1080p, which is exactly what we set up in our settings. But anyways, guys, that really wraps it up for today's video. I do want to give a quick shout out to NVIDIA for helping me out with this video. If you guys did like it and want to see more videos like it, then please do hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Please share this video with your friends if you guys have other friends who want to start recording their content for YouTube and things like that as well. These truly are the best settings that you guys can get in 2019. And if you have any questions whatsoever, just shoot me a follow on Twitter and tweet me. I'll do my best to get back to all the tweets I can, but until then, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.